Every once in a while, ChatGPT has its seasons, right? It has its seasons of doing very good, and then sometimes it starts to get a little bit lazy on us and not answer our questions, not do the commands that we give it, and its responses just lack any volume or any helpful content. But in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to mitigate that issue and how to get ChatGPT to give you good results every single time. About a week ago, I made a post on how to fix this in my private ChatGPT mastery course and community, and it seemed like it was well received. So that's why I wanted to bring it to you here today in order to help you get better responses from ChatGPT as well. Now, the most important thing you need to do in ChatGPT if you recognize that it's getting lazy is to start splitting up your tasks. What do I mean by that? Well, only give ChatGPT one task at a time. We're often found giving ChatGPT five or six tasks to do at a time. And I draw out a diagram to represent how ChatGPT is running when you're doing this. As you can see, each of these arrows represent a task. And when you give ChatGPT multiple tasks, well, it can only go so far in each direction because of its token limit. But when you start to split your tasks and do one task at a time, ChatGPT can go much more in depth and give a much more specific tailored response to each question, which would turn the graph to looking something like this. It can go one way much further than multiple ways at a time. Let me show you an example of how that works in action. So I have this prompt here in ChatGPT. It says, I need help creating a new YouTube channel that specializes in artificial intelligence. So that's my overall goal. We're doing good with that. And then I say, help me find a channel name. That's my first thing I want. Help me create subscriber milestone goals. So how many subscribers can I get by a certain date? And also how should I set those goals, you know? And I say for the year 2024, starting in March and how I can reach those goals. So there's three tasks. And then I say, give me a content calendar for posting dates and content for those dates in as well. So I've got four or five tasks in this one prompt and ChatGPT, if you remember that graph correctly, is only going to be able to go so far in depth into each task, making it have the appearance of being lazy. So I can send this off and you can see how ChatGPT will lightly touch on each topic, but it's not going to go very in depth on each task because you gave it five tasks. When you take a look at the output that ChatGPT provided using all of these tasks and not splitting up your tasks, as I've mentioned, it goes very lightly into each subject and it doesn't do that bad of a job, but it could do much better if we just prompted one task at a time. And this goes for any LLM, not just ChatGPT. Splitting your task is a good way to let the LLM focus on one specific thing at a time. So as you can see, it gives us 10 names, that's okay. The names aren't anything that I'm too concerned about. But then when you go to the more in-depth things like the subscriber milestone goals and how to get there, it gives us this little paragraph here and seven sentences on how to reach those goals, which is okay. But if we set this as a split task, as I will show you in a minute, the response is going to be much more in-depth and it's actually going to be a lot more helpful for you. Then we get into the content calendar, which is very underwhelming, it says March, April, and then it tells me to follow a similar pattern, right? I told it to give me a content calendar for 2024, all of 2024, not just the first eight weeks that I need a content calendar for. And then it just told me to continue in a similar pattern. But what you're going to notice is when I split up this content calendar task from the rest of all of this, it's going to be much more in depth and you can add cooler things when you start splitting up your tasks and focusing on one thing at a time. So now I have a new prompt of similar length, but it's focusing in on one task here. And we're going to be specifically focusing in on the content calendar. So I say, I'm creating a new YouTube channel that specializes in artificial intelligence. Important to provide that context of what my channel would be specializing in so it knows what to design the content around. And then I say, help me design a content calendar for posting dates and content for those dates as well for the entire year starting in March of 2024. So now I can go a little bit more in depth on this and I can give tasks to that task if I'd like since it's focusing still on one thing. It's just how do I want the task to be performed? I'm not giving it multiple tasks to perform. So I say, provide me a table to represent this and give me action-oriented content that people will enjoy. And this is going to be a much better content calendar than what it gave me in the previous example when I had multiple actions. I'm going to send off this message and then we will compare it to the other content calendar that it generated. So the response did just get done generating and right now I'm on the old chat thread where we gave ChatGPT multiple tasks. And this is the original content calendar that it gave us. Okay, it gave us a couple of weeks and then it just said continue in a similar pattern. Even though we asked it to give us a content calendar for the year, it only gave us two of the months and that's about it. 
But when we split up our task and we gave it a little bit more information towards that task and a little bit more thought and the one action that we needed completed, well, ChatGPT gave us an amazing table with a bunch of videos and completed the task, as we said, for the entire year, gave us this nice looking table and also gave us some tips on how to grow a YouTube channel, you know, gave us a consistency tip. And although these video ideas aren't the best, it's something much better to build on. And it gives an example of how ChatGPT goes much more in depth and actually does what you want it to do and stops being lazy when you split up your tasks. And this goes for any task, not just posting for content. The next thing that I do in order to help ChatGPT not be so lazy is I use a hidden feature that not many people know about, and this is the reply feature. This was a very sneaky addition into ChatGPT, and I don't think many people know about it. It's a good way to clean up your chat threads and reply to a specific amount of text without having to copy and paste. Overall, it's just a much better way of doing things, and it helps fix ChatGPT's laziness sometimes. So let me show you how to use that now. So let's say I'm in this original chat thread where I didn't split my tasks, and I want to respond to a specific amount of information, but I don't want to have to copy and paste it into my prompt bar, use up my prompting token limit, and also just confuse ChatGPT with a bunch of unnecessary information. I want to keep things clean and I want ChatGPT to not be lazy. Well, here's what you have to do. Let's say I want to respond to a specific thing within this chat thread. What I can do is I can highlight what I want to respond to. Maybe I want to respond to this SEO thing where it says to use relevant keywords in your video titles, description, and tags to improve searchability. And I want to ask what are good tools to do that. Well, instead of asking ChatGPT and typing out a long prompt, all I have to do is highlight what I want to respond to and hit this little reply feature above the highlighted section of ChatGPT. And once you hit reply, it will automatically put that in your prompt bar. And then you can just respond and reply to this specific point within the previously generated output from ChatGPT. So I can say, what are good tools for this for YouTube? And that's not providing any other context. I'm just simply replying to the SEO tip that it gave us earlier. All I'm saying is what are good tools for this for YouTube? And it's going to help specify that one thing that you want. And now ChatGPT knows that I'm just replying to that. I'm not replying to the whole message. So it's not going to have to dissect what I want if I use the reply feature correctly. All it's going to do is ask the question based on what I highlighted. I can send off that message. And with zero context, all I said are what are good tools for this, for YouTube, it knows that I'm replying to that. So now it's going to base its response and give me SEO tools for YouTube. And it's doing a very good job. I've used a lot of these, such as vidIQ, TubeBuddy, Social Blade, Canva, Trello. I've used pretty much all of them. That's all I have for this video. If ChatGPT is getting lazy on you, I highly recommend that you use these tips. If you want to join a private community of ChatGPT learners and learn ChatGPT from A to Z, I'll leave my course link in the description or the top pinned comment below if you are interested. With that being said, I also have a ton of free content here on YouTube that you can learn from and enjoy. Please subscribe and hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. And also comment below letting me know what you do to mitigate ChatGPT's laziness. All right, I'll see you in the next one.